A chair might seem like a simple project, but it's actually one of the hardest things to get right. It has to look good, feel comfortable, support real weight and still go together perfectly. And if you miss the mark on any of that, the whole thing falls apart. So today we will walk through the key things to focus on when building furniture, using our Adirondack chair as an example. While we are preparing the material for the chair build and CNCing the first part, let's get started with the first step of every build. Designing. This is what usually makes or breaks the project. In general, if the design is bad, the project is not worth making at all. But if it's done right, working on the further steps will be a joy. And the anticipation of seeing the result will motivate you to finish the project faster. Therefore getting the design right is essential. And that starts with setting up the criteria and knowing the key parameters. This allows you to make exactly what you want and need. In our situation we want to make the Adirondack chair on a CNC router using a single sheet of plywood. The chair has to be easy to assemble and we should also be able to take it apart in case we need to renew the finish in the future. Once we have the main parameters defined, we have to know the dimensions and angles that make the chair ergonomic and comfortable. In general, you can easily find seat heights and depth backrest angles and armrest heights that match your height online. These are important to take in consideration when designing the chair. Of course, different furniture has different dimensions that are important to consider to make it a good addition to your interior. After we have the design guidelines set, we can create the design. While doing so, it's important to be mindful of how each part will be made and how the project will be assembled. And understanding the material you are working with and knowing the wood joinery during the design process is essential. More on the joinery a bit later. At this point the CNC has cut all the parts and we need to glue some of them together. In many instances the CNC router won't be the most suitable tool to make your project parts. And that's where your craftsman skills will show. But in general it takes good understanding of the tools and careful work to make the components. And if the design is done right and the parts are crafted precisely, the further steps will be easier. While designing we added positioning holes that help us align the components that have to be glued together. This simplifies the process and results in flawless alignment between the parts. Especially since all the parts we are gluing together have joints. If they get misaligned, it will complicate the assembly and require extra work. The key point to focus on during the crafting process is getting the joinery precise. If the joints are too loose, the build won't hold together and if they are too tight you might not be able to join the parts together without chiseling each joint. While the glue is setting we can trim the edges of the remaining parts making them nicer to work with. After the glue is set, we can trim the edges of the glue parts as well. While doing so, we can start thinking about the finishing. In general, we have two options. Finishing the parts before assembling, or assemble the project and then apply the finish. The key here is to know which will be easier and provide a better result. For projects like Adirondack chair, finishing the parts before assembling is a better option. Once assembled, there would be many hard to reach areas that would be challenging to finish properly. One step that we cannot skip regardless of finish option we choose is preparing the wood surfaces for the finish by sanding. The sanded surfaces not only makes the wood smoother, but they also raise the wood grain on a micro level, allowing the finish to adhere better to the component which is beneficial in the long term. The most important part here is to understand what grade of sandpaper you should use. 
Different finishes require different smoothness of the surface. Therefore, it's important to read up on the requirements for the one you are using for your build. For example, if you are using too rough of the sandpaper, it might be noticeable after the finish is applied. And if you are using higher grit sandpapers than needed, you might be doing extra work and it actually might not be the best option since the finish might not stick to the surface as well. Once we have sanded the components for our chair, we have to chamfer a couple of holes before we can move to the finishing itself. The chamfered holes will make sense when assembling, I promise. The finish can be done with different tools, a paintbrush, roller or a sprayer. No matter the method you are using, there are a couple things you have to make sure of to achieve the best result. First of all, it's important to spread the finish evenly across the surface. Consistent thickness ensures the wood grain looks uniform and clean, without any streaks, shiny or dull patches. But it's also important not to apply too much or too little of the finish coat. If there is too much, it will collect on the low points and drip. Finishing the edges before working on the larger surfaces helps to avoid the paint drips. After we have applied the first coat of the finish, we can resand the surfaces with a finer sandpaper and apply the second coat. You might have noticed that we are also finishing the joint tenons, so it's a good time for us to talk about the joinery. Since one of the criteria when designing our chair was to make it in a way that allows us to take it apart, we decided not to glue the parts together, but to use fasteners instead. So in our case, the tenons and mortises serve mostly for aligning the parts when assembling. This means the finish on the tenons won't affect the structural integrity of the build. We also designed the Adirondack chair option that requires gluing the parts together. It has larger tenons and mortises to increase the glue surface. Small details like these matter a lot. After the parts have dried, we can start putting the parts together and show you what I mean. The order of the assembling steps is very important, especially if you are gluing the parts in place. In some cases, messing it up can mean you won't be able to assemble all the parts. First, we have to assemble the frame of the chair. To do so, we first have to attach the backrest and the front seat supports to the chair leg components. The joinery help align the parts. And the cutout in the front leg is perfect resting place for the back leg which removes the tension from the tenon joint in the front. Once we have assembled the main frame, we can secure the parts in place with screws. To prevent the screws from splitting the plywood, we have to pre-drill the holes. Now it's time to pull the parts together for this project, we are using stainless steel screws, which are suitable for outdoor use. After the screws are in place, we can attach the backrest components and pin them in place with more screws. The simple mortise and tenon solution makes assembling the project a breeze. Next we can place the seat parts on the leg component tenons. There is not enough space for the hole drill to fit between the seat and the armrest. To secure them in place, we need to have the angular adapter for the drill. To finish the assembling, all we have to do is add the front leg covers and the armrests and secure them in place with the screws. After hours we put in the project, the result looks remarkable. But the most important thing about the chair is whether it's comfortable. Yeah, this is nice. The backrest is at the perfect angle 
plenty of room on the armrests. To be honest, now I don't understand why these are not more popular in Europe. The result is more than satisfying. But most importantly, now you know why the chair is the best project to test your skills on. If you know how to make one, you can take up any woodworking project. And if you can design and create a comfortable chair from start to finish, you have my utmost respect. And even if you are using someone else's design to turn a pile of material into a functional chair, I tip my hat to you, sir. If you would like to test out your skills and make the Adirondack chair we built in this video, you will find the CNC files for the build on Aribobox.com. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.